Kia ora Year 12. Here are the next three questions from day five of the holidays. So the first one is pretty straightforward. The second one needs some thinking and some insight. So um, have a good look at that one before you play through the solution. And the last one can be done in a couple of different ways. Um, one of those will be using um, summed products and the other will be doing general solutions directly. Okay, so pause the video and have a go at them and then come back and I'll go through them. Right, so question one is to prove that 2 tan theta over 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to sine of 2 theta. So with this, this one we're going to start on the left hand side and we're just going to plug in what we know about tan theta and we're going to hopefully end up over here with sine 2 theta. Remembering that sine 2 theta is just 2 sine theta cos theta. So starting on the left hand side, this is what I'm going to get. So that's very messy. I'm going to write it out like this, 2 sine theta over cos theta divided by this. So here, getting a common denominator gives me a very nice cos squared theta plus sine squared theta in here, in the numerator here. So if I'm dividing by a fraction, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's going to be times cos squared theta over 1, which gives me 2 sine theta cos squared theta over cos theta, which is 2 sine theta cos theta, which equals sine of 2 theta, which is my right hand side as required. Okay, so that's just a very straightforward identity question. Um, there are a few different ways you could have done that. I just picked directly applying what tan theta means, um, but you might come up with some other ways. Feel free to show them to me. Now the next one is significantly harder. All right, so we've got to find the general solution for this. We've got 10 sine squared of x on 2 minus 5 sine x equals 4. So there are a couple of things that I don't like in here. The first is that I've got x on 2 here and I've got x here. So this x is twice this x on 2. So I'm going to make a note that sine of x is equal to 2 sine x on 2 cosine of x on 2. So if I use that, I can substitute this in here, and that's going to mean that at least I've just got one angle. So let's do that first and then see what we notice. I'm still not liking the 4 though, because I'm seeing a quadratic starting to form here. So I've got 10 sine squared x on 2 minus 5 times 2. So this thing equals 4, oops, where's my pen gone, equals 4. Um, to have a quadratic, I need to have blah 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 equals 0. I haven't got that, I've got equals 4. And I've got sine here and cos here. So if I can somehow um, get a quadratic in sine and cos, I might be alright. So one way to do that is to say that this is 4 times 1. This is a good trick kind of when you're desperate, right? So cos squared of x on 2 plus sine squared of x on 2. Now we're going to subtract everything from the right hand side. So what do I, what do I end up with? Well I've got 10 sine squared 
x on 2 minus 10 sine x on 2 cosine x on 2 minus 4 cosine squared of x on 2 so I'm starting to feel happier about this hopefully minus 4 sine squared x on 2 and that equals 0 so if I clean that up and um, so I collect up like terms and divide through by 2 I'm going to get 3 sine squared x on 2 minus now what 5 sine of this minus 2 cos squared x on 2 and that equals 0. So if I'm looking at that and, and not sure where to go next I can think of that as 3x squared minus 5xy minus 2y squared equals 0. So let's just play with that and spot the pattern. Well 3x squared if it's going to work it must go like this it must be 3x times x and then I want to have a minus 5 here is the coefficient and a minus 2 here. So we can try minus 2y here plus y here and let's see if that's going to work. And yes it is, there's 3x squared plus xy minus 6xy is going to generate minus 5xy minus 2y squared. So that's all good. Um, on the next slide I'm going to rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine and then we're going to solve those equations. But the hardest part of the problem is spotting how to turn it into that quadratic. Okay, so try and go from here and then just um, unpause the video when you're ready. Okay, so writing that out nicely, what do I have? 3 sine x over 2 plus cos x over 2 times sine x over 2 minus 2 cos x over 2 equals 0. So either this equals 0 or this equals 0. So writing that out we get 3 sine of x over 2 equals negative cosine of x over 2 or sine of x over 2 equals 2 cosine of x over 2. So the easiest way to go here is to use tan um, Alright, um, sorry, I don't know, something weird just happened there, but we'll keep on going. So we get tan of x over 2 is equal to negative 1 third. So no nice answers to these, So or um, not sine, we get tan of x over 2 is equal to 2. So we're going to do general solutions on those. Um, we'll work with both of them. So the principal value here... Alpha is going to equal negative 0.3218. As I said, nothing flash about that solution. But it's good practice at general solutions. So now we've got x over 2 is equal to n pi plus alpha. Okay, that's my general solution when I've got tan. So x is going to be 2n pi minus... 0 0.6436. So I'm just multiplying everything through by 2 there. Um, for this one here, um, the principal value is going to be 1.1071 to 4dp. So we get x over 2 is equal to n pi plus 1.1071. But we want to have the solution for x. So it's going to be x equals 2n pi plus 2 times alpha, so 2.2, 2, what's that going to be? I'm trying to do that in my head. 2, let's just call it 214, whatever. Probably 2.2142. I'm sure you'll tell me if that's not right. So there we go. So they're the um, full set of solutions to that very unpleasant disguised quadratic. 
make sure you've gone through that one thoroughly. Um, the trick in there with sine squared plus cos squared is a really nice one for when you get stuck. Got one last one to go, which is a little bit easier. Okay, so we've got cos of 3x equals cos of x. So the first way I'm going to solve this is by doing general solutions on it. So what we're going to say here is, what's the principal solution? for the angle whose cosine is cos of x. So this is what I'm doing every time when I do general solutions. Alpha is that principal value. So alpha is just equal to x. So now I have 3x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus x. So that should feel a little bit weird, but actually pretty easy. Now I split into two cases. I've got 3x is equal to all of the multiples, integer multiples of 2 pi, 2n pi, plus x, and 3x is equal to all of the integer multiples of 2 pi, minus x. So we get 2x is equal to 2n pi, and x is equal to n pi. So that's one set of solutions. Over here I get 4x is equal to 2n pi, so x is equal to n pi over 2. So there we go. So it looks great. It looks like I've got um, all of my solutions there in two lots. But if you look a bit closer, we don't need one of those because everything here is included here. So my set of solutions is x is equal to n pi on 2, where n is any integer. Now, you can do this question using um, summed product. Um, I think this video is far too long as it is, so I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to try, and you'll find that you get exactly the same thing going on. You should pop out with two um, sets of solutions, and then you conclude that you just need these ones. All right, thanks for watching all the way to the end if you did, and I will be back tomorrow with three more problems.